first of all, um, what is the best way to minimise the effects of vaping? Is the cat already out of the bag? Genie out of the bottle, if you want another analogy. It's hard to get back in, isn't it? Good morning, Laura. Look, I think you're right in a sense that we're starting to take the lid off the genie bottle, but we still have a window of opportunity to protect young Australians. Mm -hmm. And I think it's uh, absolutely an opportunity we should grasp with both hands at the moment. OK, but when you say the opportunity to uh, protect young Australians, what are you talking about? Are you talking about um, minimising the effects of vaping or do you accept that vapes are so prevalent and available now that many uh, teens are going to do it regardless? Yeah, the issue we see at the moment is vapes have been overtaken from their original purpose. So they were designed to be a temporary smoking cessation aid mm. for heavy smokers who just couldn't work with anything else. But unfortunately, vapes that are flavoured, they're clearly aimed at young kids and contain nicotine, have led to extraordinary levels of dependence in young Australians. And I think all of your viewers would see young mm. Aussie kids around the country inhaling vapes. Uh, the legislation before the, par before the parliament is our absolute best chance of putting that genie into the bottle before it's all the way out. So we support it strongly, Laura. Yeah, but why... But it's, it hasn't worked so far, right? And I know the legislation before the parliament um, goes beyond what we've seen, but why wouldn't we use what we know has worked with smoking? Um, smoking is, is taxed massively by the government and we have those very unsexy um, warnings on cigarettes. Why not go down that path? But wouldn't it be great if we hadn't had to do all that with cigarettes in the first place? Yeah, and but we know we the at that level, about are we at that po point already when, we, when you see the levels of vaping? Yeah, but there's no way we're going to be able to stop cigarettes coming into the country or anything like that. This is all about really sensible reform that puts Aussie kids first. It's not about raising money. We know from tobacco our experience is that no. every dollar you raise, you have to spend $10 cleaning up the mess. And we don't want Australia to be in that situation with vapes. We've got a small opportunity to get vapes away from being flavoured, coloured things that young Aussie mm. kids become dependent on and put them where they were originally intended to be, which is a brief short smoking cessation aid. This is what the legislation's all about and that's why every single public health group in the country supports it, Laura. Why, what in this legislation, this bill before Parliament, what's the one thing that you think will actually work? Well, I think it's a big suite of things. And, in fact, I think the legislation also has to be coupled with an education campaign for all the reasons we've talked about. But at the end of the day, we have a chance. The whole world is looking at Australia and saying, wouldn't it be fantastic if we could bring this in before it's too late? I think the idea that we all just lie down and give up is just the worst possible idea. It's not even the Aussie spirit. Mm. We're here to fight for the health of young Australian kids, not for the profits of convenience stores. No, but what's in the bill, most specifically? I mean, I know the government has been trying to stop the, the import of these vapes and, you know, intermittently we get reports um, and we put them on this program that, you know, a million vapes have been stopped, but that doesn't even touch the sides. So this bill is all about saying, yes, if you want to use an e-cigarette, you can use it, but it's done in a medical paradigm so that you use it the way they're intended as part of a smoking cessation. We take all the flavour, all of the coloured packages and we stop these pop-up convenience stores that set up in, in the vicinity of schools trying to make Australian kids dependent and breathe in these extraordinarily harmful vapours. I, I don't see how anyone actually supports yeah. the idea of widespread vaping. It eludes me why they would. I don't think anyone supports it. It's about the reality of how to stop it now um, because it is so widespread and the government has not been successful in stopping the import of these things. Yeah, because the laws just haven't been enacted. We had legislation in states and territories saying that it's illegal to supply vapes or vape products to young Australians, mm. but everyone ignored it and there's been no enforcement of that. So now we're going to say, look, let's really tackle the root of the problem, which is the companies who deliberately 
design and market vapes to young Australians because yeah. they want a whole generation of Australians hooked. And just giving up on that, Laura, is appalling. No, I, I, yeah, I agree with you. Um, I think it's yeah. uh, one of the we biggest... We all agree. <laughs> yeah, I think it's one of the biggest... Um, health burdens that we can't quite see the effects of uh, just yet. I don't think the research is keeping up with Agreed. the prevalence of it. Um, and we don't, we just simply don't know the harms just yet. But what I'm saying is what the government is do, has done so far hasn't worked enough. It's worked around the fringes. I think this legislation will go even further. But what we do know has worked, and that's when, when it comes to smoking, is actually making these vapes so expensive that Kids just can't afford to buy them. If this doesn't work, would you consider that? I think we need to give this legislation the chance. I think, as I said before, every public health body and health economists think this is the way to go. And lying down and giving up and saying, well, look, if they're there, well, mm -hmm. let's make as much money off them as possible is a really poor way to go, Laura. OK, thanks so much for your time today. We'll see how it goes. Pleasure.